Hi. So today, my favorite stock in the world, Apple, has announced a four to one stock split. Now what this means is that we as investors will get to see not just one stock, not just two stock splits, not just three, but actually four bad jokes. <laughs> get it? It's four aces, four bad jokes. Now what this means is that on August 24th, for every one share of Apple that you own, you will get three more for a grand total of four. And that is how- He's wrong. Andre Jick is wrong. Kind of feels good. Andre Jick is wrong. The 24th doesn't matter. The 24th is meaningless. The 24th was yesterday. Anybody hold any shares to the 24th? Did anything happen? I was holding shares of Apple. Did anything happen? Nothing happened. I'm so angry you can see like my nipples are hard. Man, this shirt's actually kind of pornographic. I was wearing this one before, but I was also getting so angry I was starting to pit it out really bad. You see that? Yeah, so you guys are gonna have to deal with my nipples poking out because my laundry's in the laundry. So if anybody tells you that you need to buy shares before the 24th and hold to the 24th and floss your way to the 29th and then hold into the 31st and then you get your split shares and you make free money, Tell him to shut up. Don't listen to Andre Jick. Don't listen to people who say that. Listen to your boy. At some point during this video, please do yourself a favor. Do me a favor. Look in the description below. There's a lot of free money sitting down there in the form of free stocks, okay? Just sitting there waiting to be snatched up. There's also 25% off extra wallets, which allow you to track both your wallet and your phone so you never lose both. And I lose both of mine literally every day. So it's really helpful. Couldn't live without it. Just listen to me ramble in the background, please. So the 24th doesn't matter. The 25th doesn't matter. The 26th is National Women's Equality Day. So, and then the 27th doesn't matter. The 28th, who cares? The 29th, that's the day you have to pay attention to. Pay attention to the 29th. That is Apple's and Tesla's split date. Hi, yeah, this is kind of awkward. I was about to post this video and I realized I made a mistake. Now, I know what you might be thinking. You're thinking, wow, Adam, that's pretty ironic considering you just made fun of Andre Jick for making a mistake. Well, maybe I'm roasting him not for the mistake, but because we were gonna make a video together and he ghosted me. It I'm sorry. I'm like, oh, these allergies. My mistake was that the 29th is a Saturday, and Saturday is for the boys, so you should pay attention to it. But really, the 28th is what is important regarding the splits. That is Tesla's and Apple's split date. So if you hold in to close on the 28th and then to open on the 31st, you will get your split shares. Now, you might also be thinking, why did Andre say the 24th? Did he just pull it out of his hat like another magic trick? No, that is Apple's record date. And when you read the description of the record date, it's pretty confusing. For example, here's how CNN describes it. Monday marks the first key moment in the split, the record date. This determines which Apple investors will receive additional shares on Friday, August 28th. And that is so misleading it makes me wanna jump off a cliff. The 24th, the record date, is nothing more than a formality. It's an accounting issue. It is not an investor issue. You do not need to worry about it. This makes it sound like you have to hold shares on the 24th and then you get your split shares on the 28th, when really, in reality, if you hold shares on the 28th, you'll get your split shares on the 31st. So I can't blame Andre too bad. The description of the record date is pretty confusing. Maybe it's all just sour grapes for me. Andre, if you wanna hang out, just call me. So let's say if you bought one share of Apple, literally, one second before close on the 29th. This is your one share of Apple. If you buy it literally one second before close on the 29th, hold through close and into open on the 31st, this is what happens. Because there's a weekend between the 29th and the 31st. So on Monday, you will wake up to four shares in your account. However, did you notice any paper disappear? Does it look like the same amount of paper? Hey, idiot. It's the same amount of paper, right? So that means that your net liquidity, your profit and loss has not changed. You just have more shares, but the overall position is the same value as it was before the split. So if that share was 400 bucks before, now each one of these is worth 100 bucks. So it's 100, 200, 300, 400. It's worth exactly the same amount. So nothing really changes from an investor perspective. You might see a little bit of a boost on announcement day, but that boost is kind of artificial because that boost in stock price, because it's not based on fundamentals. Nothing fundamentally changed about the company. So eventually that boost will correct back down. You might not really see when that happens because it's gonna be mixed in with all the normal trading. But it, since it's not based on fundamentals at all, nothing fundamentally changes in a company when they undergo a stock split. You're gonna see that correct back down after some point. So your profit and loss does not change, okay? Unless you happen to buy before the hype and you, you, you rode that up. From a theory perspective, a stock split has no effect on profit and loss. So if it doesn't affect profit and loss, why do companies do it? 
why would they bother? seems like a lot of extra hubbub for nothing. Well, there's two reasons why they might do it. The first is it allows investors like you and me to participate in trading in their stock. And by that, I mean, if, if Apple had never done a stock split and they've done four in the past, if they had never done a stock split, they would be trading at f roughly $24,000 per share. And I don't know about you, but I can't cram that into my portfolio. Some people aren't willing to have their entire entire portfolio be literally a single share of a company. By doing stock splits like this and reducing the price per share, but keeping the same market cap, then it allows smaller investors, Robinhood investors, investors like you and me, to hop on board and participate in buying and selling the company's stock. So they do that to allow people to participate, which kind of leads into the second reason they do it, which is to improve liquidity. If you have more people participating and buying this and selling the stock, you're going to have more volume traded per day, which is going to squeeze the bid ask together, make it more cost effective and cost efficient to buy and sell the stock. Everyone's happy. One company who's never done a stock split because stock splits are not required by any means is Berkshire Hathaway Class A. So those, those shares have never undergone a stock split. In fact, they're trading at $319,970 as of today. I'm not joking. The reason Warren Buffett did this is because he wants like-minded people, like-minded investors investing in Berkshire Hathaway. Those like-minded investors are forced to be long-term, forward-looking, growth, potential fetishizing investors that look forward. Because if you're going to spend $318,000 on one share of a stock, you're not trying to get the little tiny price fluctuations. It's more for long-term growth. A better defense for that really is that the bid ask is really wide because the volume is barely over a thousand a day while Apple's is like 40 million. The bid ask is thousands of dollars wide, which means there's an upfront cost to buying a single share of Berkshire Hathaway class A. So that necessitates that you're looking more for the long term and not really the short term. So those are the two reasons. One, to allow smaller investors to participate and two, to provide higher liquidity in their stock. But for you as an investor, before the split, after the split, if you decide to participate by buying before the 29th close and holding through the 31st, or if you decide to buy after the split, nothing changes. Nothing changes for you as the investor. You just see more shares in your account. If you have uh, fractional shares, it depends on the brokerage. I don't know how each brokerage deals with it. I don't know how TD Ameritrade does. I don't know how Robinhood does. Webull, no clue. You're gonna have to contact support if you have fractional shares. Some will liquidate your fractional shares positions and just give you the cash. Others will slice and dice it some more. I don't know how your specific brokerage is gonna handle it. What about options? Well, it's kind of the same deal. If you plan on holding options through the 29th into the 31st, you're gonna see a lot of changes to them. In fact, you can calculate what changes will happen right here. It's going to pop up on your screen. I haven't done it for you because I'm lazy. You're going to see changes to the number of contracts, the deliverables, which is how many shares the contract controls, the strike. You're going to see probably a lot of changes. That's all to keep things on an even keel. If there were no changes to your options positions at all, and you had a call and all of a sudden the stock price dropped all the way down, you know, your strike's way up here. It's going to be way out of the money. You're going to incur a bunch of losses for no reason. So there's going to be a bunch of adjustments to keep your position whole. In other words, to keep your Greeks the same, your delta, theta, gamma, vega, and rho. So those all stay the same before the split and after the split so that you don't have to worry about it. Your position is identical both before the split and after the split. Hello, how's it going? I have a couple things to address. Number one, I would like to address my hair. Okay, I know it's bad. You don't have to tell me. I'll get a haircut in the next day or two. I'm sorry. Secondly, I say that nothing really changes about your options, like you shouldn't worry about it at all. And that's not entirely correct. So yeah, your Greeks stay the same. So your overall Greeks for the position are the exact same. But with these really weird options where the strikes are different and you know all the changes we discussed, the liquidity for those options tends to decrease after the split and also dry up very quickly because there's only a limited amount of these weird options. And eventually they start expiring or being uh, exercised and they start you know, volume goes down and down and down, and you don't want to be bag holding something that you can't sell. So personally, me personally, wouldn't hold options uh, through a split. Up to you though, if you plan to exercise or whatever, it's your call, okay? Nice seeing you, bye-bye. So for you as an investor right now, there's not much difference before the split, after the split, if you buy now, buy later, it's really a bunch of hubbub over nothing, but it's really good to know so that you're not confused when you see your options contracts change a bunch and you wonder if you need to do anything about it. But it might be helpful for you if you're a small investor and now you can really tweak at a granular level your portfolio because you can decide how much of Apple or Tesla to fit in your account. Maybe you couldn't afford Tesla, now you can. So if you're a small investor, great news for people who had no problem fitting these guys into their portfolio. 
the Apple and Tesla stock splits are really not going to be a big deal. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope my nipples weren't too distracting. Have a lovely day. <laughs> <laughs> the same exact bitch.